Some months ago, this video went viral. In the video, a grey box is riding on train tracks, or rather it's levitating. The Italian company IronLev presented a magnetic levitation train this year. It's the world first magnetic levitation or maglev train to run on existing tracks at an average speed of 70 km or about 44 miles per hour. An upcoming test vehicle is expected to reach 200 km per hour or 124 miles per hour. The company is saying that their Iron Left technology will be the gold standard for the trains of the future. How the technology works and whether we really have a breakthrough here or just very good advertising, that's what we will be talking about today. My name is Jacob and in Germany we say Los geht's. Trains have been around for about 200 years. In 1804, British engineer Richard Trevithick built the first locomotive suitable for use on rails. However, the commercial breakthrough did not happen until the 1820s and in Germany it wasn't until 1835 when the first German railway line was built between Nuremberg and Fürth. However, the traditional railroad has a few problems. For example, extremely high maintenance costs. According to the German Institute for Economic Research, one kilometer of rail in Germany costs around 300,000 euros. And of course, we also have rolling friction due to the contact between the wheel and rail, that is resistance. And this is where IronLev wants to improve. They have developed a completely new magnetic levitation train. And it is designed to solve problems on the one hand, while also bringing additional benefits on the other. IronLev even presents itself on its website as a further development of the wheel. But let's see how much there really is to it and how IronLev's maglev train actually works. Maglev train follow an idea. An air cushion physically separates the vehicle from the track. This should result in less friction, noise, vibrations and greater efficiency. This is also how the rather expensive Transrapid and Maglev trains work. But this is where the similarities with IronLev end. While Maglev works with electromagnetism, IronLev works with permanent magnets. The company uses paramagnetism for its magnetic levitation train. This is exactly the same principle as kitchen magnets for example. Of course, a kitchen magnet is not enough for what IronLev has in mind. Something stronger is needed, namely permanent magnets made from rare earth. Samarium, terbium, dysprosium or the somewhat better known neodymium are often used for such magnets. Now of course it is somewhat difficult to obtain construction plans for a prototype like IronLev. On its website the company describes its technology as a magnetic slider. It lies on the rail like an upside down U. Pictures of the technology are a little bit more revealing than the graphic. Here you can see that the actual magnets do not enclose the rail in a U shape but are only located at the height of the rail head. This creates a magnetic flux from pole to pole. The flux always seeks the path with the lowest magnetic resistance. In other words, materials that conduct magnetic fields well. Steel for example. That's what railroad tracks are made of and the head of the rail is located exactly between the two permanent magnets in iron left. So the flux here goes from one pole through the rail head to the other pole. And apparently this flux is so strong that it can keep the module at the same height. But is that really enough for us to say the train is levitating? The basic idea behind maglev trains was this air cushion between the track and the vehicle. So no physical contact at all. And that is precisely what brings the advantages. A promotional video of the IronLev website shows how the technology works. In the video, the demonstration module actually has no contact with the rail. Of course, this hardly says anything about the prototype. So let's take another look at the picture from it and there we see, in addition to the magnets, the module also has rollers. And these are spacers. Because if a magnet gets too close to the rail, the magnet naturally sticks directly to it and nothing moves. However, the vehicle also has contact with the track. So of course, it's no longer completely suspended because the contact creates friction between the tracks and the vehicle. However, it must be said, that unlike normal train wheels, the spacers do not carry any additional load. A loaded freight wagon, for example, can quickly weigh 50 tons or more. And that puts a pretty heavy load on the train wheels. That's why you have to change such wheels every three to five years. So that's a small advantage of IronLev. But is that enough to call it the gold standard for the next centuries? IronLev has now tested its prototype. The test took place on the Adria Mestre railroad line. This is in the Italian region of Veneto. According to IronLev, this was the world's first magnetic levitation train test on existing line. The company used its one ton prototype. It ran at speeds of up to 70 km per hour or 44 miles per hour on the two kilometer track. According to IronLev, the speed was self-limited. 
In the future, IronLev would like to go up to 200 km per hour or 124 miles per hour, and not with one metric ton, but with 20. The company also says that they were able to measure significant benefits in terms of efficiency, and noise and vibrations have also been reduced. What exactly IronLev means by significant advantages, however, is not so clear. IronLev has not published the measurements data. IronLev also does not say how the engine works. However, a picture of the prototype provides another clue. What you can see here appears to be electric motors with friction wheels, and they rub against the inside of the rail. The power for this presumably comes from batteries. In any case, contact with the rail, and this means friction again, and that's not even the biggest problem of it. So let's get to the big obstacle or hurdle of the video. The first major problem is the material itself, because permanent magnets made from rare earth are simply extremely expensive. China has the most reserves, and the prices are really, really high. A kilo of neodymium, for example, costs over 80 US dollars. That's about 74 euros. And by way of comparison, the price of steel was recently around 630 euros, but per metric ton. So neodymium is around 117 times more expensive than steel. Railway switches are another topic. With iron left, the magnet is positioned in a U-shape above the railhead. The iron left approach therefore cannot use existing railway switches in the rail network. This makes integration into the rail network extremely difficult. But that's exactly where iron left wants to go. In 2019, there were over 65,000 railway switches alone in Germany. Iron Lev would not be able to use them without an expensive conversion. This would probably eliminate most of all routes. Then there is also the question of whether the weight fits. The prototype only weighed one ton, but full freight wagons can easily weigh 50 tons. So the question is, at what weight does the technology with the permanent magnets reach its limit? The biggest problem for me, however, is the so-called eddy currents. We have the two permanent magnets with iron lab and they generate a magnetic field. Between them is a railhead, and that is a conductor. And because we also want to travel with iron left technology, we are now moving. However, when a conductor moves through a magnetic field, the magnetic field also changes, and this change creates a kind of turbulence in the magnetic field. And these eddy currents can create a pretty blatant resistance, and so reduce the movement. But it is also the case that magnetic eddy currents generate induction heat. Incidentally, induction stoves work in that way. Here too, eddy currents generate the heat. In practice, however, this means that the railhead heats up due to the movement of the permanent magnets. This makes it extremely difficult to imagine how iron left can achieve higher speeds. On the one hand, the eddy currents slow down the movement. On the other hand, you have to ask yourself, how much induction heat can the tracks resist? Iron left itself also sees the first commercial use in urban areas. Here trains usually run a little slower anyway. Iron left wants to be a sustainable and low noise alternative here. The fact that it is also sufficient for large rail networks is highly questionable especially over long distances. The technology simply has too many weaknesses for that. So at the end, I would say it's definitely an exciting approach. And on a small scale, on certain routes, the technology would certainly make a lot of sense. According to Reuters, there is also something like this on a smaller scale in China. But the Iron Left prototype is more likely to end up being a really good advertising campaign than the new gold standard. Oh, and even if they say it's the first of its kind, actually, that's not true. For example, there's another company with the same idea in Poland. If you want to have a video about this too, just write it in the comment. But first, what is your opinion on the technology? Also put it in the comment. And apart from that, here's another video for you. And I say goodbye, or in Germany we say Auf Wiedersehen.